so today we are going to discuss about the antiviral drugs and that is the last this is our last class and we are going to discuss about the mechanism of action of various antiviral drugs so coming to the mechanism of action of these antiviral drugs so all the drugs which are coming under this antiviral classification so they have the main action so they can act that means they can act at any they can act at any stage of replication any stage of replication process okay so that means they can act at any part of the replication process so that they can inhibit or they can inhibit or they can stop that replication from a one single virus to the multiple virus so as we have discussed in the replication process like we got some various steps okay so that means in that all the process so each an individual drug as a particular uh, action to stop at some particular stage of that replication okay so we will be discussing about what are the different stages and in that stages the first one is the attachment okay so first one is the attachment so that means a virus or else even we can call it as a virion okay so it can bind with the host cell for the replication process that means even at the attachment also our drugs are going to inhibit or they can show the action at the attachment phase okay so this is the first one and the second one is the uncoating process okay uncoating so that means one hour there is a attachment of a virion into the host cell and they get penetrated inside the host cell okay and the next step will be the uncoating of that particular virus so why because this virus will be having some genetic information like whether it is a single stranded rna or a dna which is going to be closed by a protein substances we can call it as a capsid okay which is a coated one so what happens whenever after the attachment whenever it enters into the host cell within the cytoplasm so it gets uncoated okay that means it starts releasing the genetic information into the cytoplasm okay so in the process that means after the attachment the next one will be the uncoating within the penetration of the host cell so after the uncoating so after the attachment and uncoating so there will be a starting of early stage early stage of protein synthesis early stage of protein synthesis so this will be our the next one so early stage of the protein synthesis so this will be our the next target for the antiviral drugs so the first one is attachment phase so that means they get attaching so uncoating so where they are going to get uncoated and they release the genetic information so after releasing of these particular substances the genetic information along with some of the enzymes so within the ribosome they start synthesizing the new proteins for the replication process that phase we call it as a early stage of the protein synthesis and the fourth and the important one is the nucleic acid synthesis nucleic acid synthesis so this one will be the fourth one so where they are going to synthesize the nucleosides and nucleotides for the next coming protein synthesis where they make up into the new virus molecules so these are the four steps and the last one last second one is the late synthesis of proteins okay late synthesis of proteins okay so in the late synthesis of proteins whatever the proteins and the nucleic acids or the rna dna whatever they have been synthesized are going to be at the final levels they will be in the late synthesis of proteins and after the late synthesis of the proteins the immediate will be the packing okay packing of those particular substances this uh, genetic information on the packing and even assembly so that means they will be packed and assembled at one place for ready for the release from the host cell into the outer side of the part okay 
So attachment, uncoating, early stage of the protein synthesis, nucleic acid synthesis and the late synthesis of proteins. So after the final stage of the synthesis of these proteins or the nucleosides or the nucleotides, the RNA and DNA molecules and the next immediate will be the packing. So that means they get packed away. Okay, after packing they get assembled at one position. That means they are get ready for the release. So in the final one is the release. Okay, this release can be done by three ways. That is exocytosis, okay, budding and the cell lysis. Okay, these are the three different phases of release of the virus into the outer from the host cell. Okay, so one is the exocytosis, one is the budding and another one is lysis. So these are the different stages in the replication process of a virus. So there is attachment, uncoating, early stage of the protein synthesis, nucleic acid synthesis, late synthesis of proteins. So in that we got the packing assembly. Okay. So the packing is simply nothing but whatever the information, the genetic information has been produced, they start getting packed. Okay. So just like some vesicle formation or endocytosis even. So that's packing. And the, after packing they get assembled at one position for the ready for the release from the host cell. And the release can be done by three different processes whether it can undergo the exocytosis, budding or lysis. This cell lysis is nothing but whole the host cell is going to be get rupture and they will release the new cells, new virus. So that means our what are the drugs we are discussing, the antiviral drugs. So they can inhibit, some drugs can inhibit either here at the attachment phase, they can either show the action at the attachment and they can even inhibit the uncoating of the drugs, uh, uncoating of the virus and even they can inhibit the early synthesis of the proteins and even the most important one is the nucleic acid synthesis and even the packing assembly or the late synthesis and even they can inhibit either at the release. So that means at any point, okay, so these antiviral drugs can inhibit the replication process so that one the single virion will not be get converted into the multiple virus or the virions. Okay, so we will just project it in the host cell so that we can give some of the drugs for this antiviral one. Okay, let's uh, draw some of the host cell. Okay, so assume this is a host cell. Okay, so this host cell that means this is our one of uh, host cell in our the body because the virus cannot produce its metabolism or the replication within in the virus okay because they consider as a non-living one organisms so because of that they require one of the living one so this is a host cell which is a living one is going to be using in our body okay so for example a virion or a virus okay this is a virus and uh, some genetic information some enzymes within it which is a capsid molecule and it got a, some phospholipid bilayer which is envelope the virus and it got some spike proteins or glycoprotein molecules okay this is a some single virion so which is going to be get bind with this host cell this phase we call it as a attachment phase okay it is going to be get attached so this attachment can be done by two ways one is a receptor mediated endocytosis okay another one okay is a membrane fusion membrane fusion so these are the two ways okay so receptor mediated endocytosis okay so receptor mediated endocytosis what happens so in the receptor mediated endocytosis what happens this uh, virion will be coming to bind with this host cell right okay in this uh, host cell so they come here and along with this this is also a phospholipid bilayer of the host cell so whenever it enters okay so this virus has been entered so because of the receptors present on this host cell as well as with the this virion has some protein substances for binding with that particular receptors okay what happens is this form a endocytosis okay so that means already we got a phospholipid bilayer over that also we got some of the phospholipid bilayer of the host cell making it a endocytosis receptor mediated endocytosis okay so after forming of some vesicle or the protection layer so this gets deattached okay 
so this is how a receptor mediated endocytosis is formed okay so this process of attachment also can be inhibited by our antiviral drugs okay so there is a receptor mediated endocytosis and we will be looking into the membrane fusion as well okay so this membrane fusion what happens the same scenario but what happens is here so they enter here okay the virus but there will be no phospholipid bilayer so they get fused with this layer okay they get fused here okay and the spike proteins will be on the top just like a some buds okay only the capsid one okay only the capsid along with some virus it has been along with its genetic information will be entered so these are the two different ways of entry one is a receptor mediated endocytosis and the membrane fusion one okay so in the receptor uh, mediated endocytosis they form the protection of another phospholipid bilayer with the help of the host cell uh, bilayer whereas here in case of this membrane fusion so the membrane of this virus will be get fused here with some uh, color identification this is the spikes of a virus so that means this is a particular membrane of a virus which is got fused with the host cell so because we are calling it as a membrane fusion only the capsid will be entry so this is the first phase of that our replication process that is a attachment so here this can be avoided or inhibited by some of the antiviral drugs so this one attachment can be inhibited by another uh, drugs info vir tide this is a one drug okay another one mara virac okay mara virac and doco senal okay so these are the some examples of the drugs of the antiviral drugs so where they can inhibit the binding or the attachment of this virion to with the host cell okay so that means in our the first step of the replication process we got the attachment is the first step and for the first step of the attachment we got some few examples which are going to bind this replication attachment okay so the virus is going to be get attached in two different ways these are going to be inhibited by these are the some drugs okay and the next one so after this entry so that means it got some entry and they got penetrated and they undergo some un coating okay so that means these will be get uncoated so there also will be having some of the drugs which are going to be get stopping this uncoating so this uncoating this is our next step okay so here we got some of the drugs amantidine okay and primantidine okay so these are the drugs which are going to be used in stopping the uncoating process because for example assume this is a uh, coated one okay so inside we got the genetic information this uncoating means it is going to release its genetic information along with some of its enzymes for the replication process this phase is going to be get inhibited by using some of the drugs like amantidine and trimantidine drugs so whereas here we got this one and this is the second step which is a uncoating one and followed by the uncoating one we got the early stage early stage of the protein synthesis that means these enzymes for example if you miss the step here by blocking this uh, amantidine and trimantidine drugs of the uncoating process what happens so the released virus the genetic information so will be get ready for the another synthesis of the proteins from these things by going undergoing some changes with the ribosomes okay okay this is the early stage so this undergoes the early uh, early stage of the protein synthesis and the drug is forming visen okay that is a drug so this forming visen is a drug which is going to inhibit the early stage of the protein synthesis so from where we are going to get this early stage of the protein synthesis from the genetic information of the virus along with some of the enzymes which are released from this coated protein uh, virus okay so here uncoating is going to be not inhibited by using these drugs okay these drugs amantidine and trimantidine 
what happens the released one will be undergoing some early stages of the protein synthesis so oh, still we can inhibit this step or the process by using a drug called formivisen okay and for example if you get a, any one drug name from this amantadine trimantadine because this is the most uh, some important one okay so if you get a, any one of the drug and ask them to explain about the mechanism of action. So simply you can write about the replication process and where it is going to inhibit. That is simply it is going to inhibit the uncoating process of the virus. Okay. So let us get into the next one. So that means we have finished this step 3 also. In the step 4 we got the nucleic acid synthesis. So this is the most important one. Nucleic acid because this is the one step where we get all the required DNA and RNA are going to be synthesized from this nucleic acid pathways okay so this is our fourth one and we have some of the drugs which are going to target here okay so namely reverse transcriptase enzyme inhibitors these are the class of drugs okay and anti metabolites So these are the drugs, these are the class of drugs, antimetabolites and reverse transcriptase inhibitors enzyme. So for this one we have the big list of the class, okay, we will be discussing after finishing all these steps, okay, we will be coming back to the reverse transcriptase enzyme inhibitor drugs. So what happens is here some of the drugs, so even if we discuss about the reverse transcriptase enzyme, so that is a one enzyme which is going to be released along with this genetic information, for example within the HIV the reverse transcript is what happens whatever it is going to release so because it has a genetic information of a RNA but the enzyme is reverse transcriptase so instead of going from the RNA to the messenger RNA it will be getting back to the DNA synthesis okay within the cytoplasm okay so because of those things here the nucleic acid synthesis pathway the getting back to the DNA synthesis and undergoing all the changes so we can block it by using the reverse transcriptase enzyme inhibitors okay so another one fifth one okay late synthesis okay late synthesis of the proteins okay so from the late synthesis of the proteins whatever if you miss something here it is going to be undergoing the late synthesis for the requirement of the packing okay they get packed and assemble okay they get back and assemble okay so the virus which are going to be synthesized from here they undergo the late synthesis and the packing and assembly okay here we got the drugs as a protease inhibitor drugs protease inhibitor drugs because this is one enzyme which is going to involved in which is an enzyme which is going to be obtained from the virus okay involved in for the genetic information okay so this is an enzyme okay so which is going to be involved there so we are also going to block this protease enzyme which is involved here in the packing and assembly or even in the late synthesis okay so that means here we left with some examples for the reverse transcriptase enzyme inhibitors and protease inhibitors okay so after this packing and assembly so what happens is they will be ready for release okay so this release can be stopped or inhibited by drugs neuramidase inhibitors neuramidase inhibitors so this is a particular enzyme which is involved in the release okay so neuramidase enzyme inhibitors so the release can be either exocytosis that means for example you got the virus we got the some all the new virus okay they come under a one vesicle formation endocytosis so they will be causing the rupture okay and the release okay so this process of releasing of these viruses outside we call it as a exocytosis okay and for example if you got some virus here the new virus but we don't have any vesicle formation okay so what happens is the next another one we can use is a budding technique so here budding technique what happens they keep moving okay they keep moving till here because we got left with some buds here okay so what happens they come here and they attach here and these buds will be attached to this one and they will be exited out so after their exit there will be no attachment of these buds will be getting another fresh phospholipid bilayer of the host cell okay that is a bird budding 
and another one is in lysis the complete host cell is going to be get ruptured and they get released out okay so these are the some target sites for us so if you can see clearly that the first one is the attachment here it is the uncoating we got amantidine and remantidine and early stage of the protein synthesis that is a formivision and the fourth one is a nucleic acid synthesis we got uh, reverse transcriptase enzyme inhibitors because that is an enzyme which are involved in the formation or the creation of the new nucleic acid systems and late synthesis and packing and assembly we can inhibit by protein protease enzyme inhibitors as well as a release can be uh, stopped by using neuramidase enzyme inhibitors so coming to the drugs here in the first we have given some examples for here and for the uncoating we have given some examples as well as for the early stage we have given some another one drug example we left with is a reverse transcriptase protease and neuramidase okay so first we'll go with the neuramidase one because it is a little bit simple and we got only two drug names okay so coming to this neuramidase okay so we got two drugs oseltamivir oseltamivir okay this is the drug and another one is a zamavir zana mivir so these are the two drugs oseltamivir and zana mivir so these are the two drugs which are used in inhibiting the neuramidase enzyme so that it stops the inhibition or the release of the virus from the host cell okay so if we compare this neuramidase in, uh, enzyme inhibitors that is oseltamivir and zam zanamivir and another one is the uncoating drugs amantidine and remantidine so these two class of drugs okay which are used in treating the respiratory infections respiratory infections okay so respiratory infections like for example influenza type a and type b a and b okay so this is the best example for we can give for the influenza type a and type b which comes under the respiratory one okay you can give as a oseltamivir zanamivir which in case to inhibit the neuramidase enzyme to stop the release so another respiratory and influenza type a type b you can use is uncoating one amantidine and remantidine drugs okay this is the first one the respiratory causing virus infections okay influenza a and b we can use this another one uh, in, we can discuss here about is the hepatic viral infections hepatic viral infections okay so this hepatic viral infection is nothing but which are caused by the hepatitis virus okay it can be hepatitis a b c okay whatever it may be like d also we have available so hepatic viral infections a b c for example if you take and the class of drugs here we as a interferons inter ferons interferons okay so these are the recombinant dna technology drugs recombinant dna technology synthesizer drugs which are used in treating the hepatic viral infections so here in the interferons we got alpha beta and gamma drugs three different class of interferon drugs which are synthesized by the recombinant dna technology one so the main mechanism of these drugs in treating the hepatitis viral infections is the conversion of mrna to trna transfer rna okay so they convert this messenger rna to the transfer rna why because this messenger rna is responsible in the synthesis of the nucleic acids as well as the late synthesis of proteins proteins are going to be synthesized with this rna so because to stop that conversion here in the late synthesis okay in case of treating the hepatitis virus infections like a b and c we can use this interferon drugs which is alpha beta gamma type which are produced by the dna technology recombinant dna technology so, so what happens when we take these drugs they can stop the conversion of messenger rna to the transfer rna so that they cannot be converted into the protein synthesis if there is no protein synthesis so we don't get having the virus synthesized and we don't have the packing and assembly okay so coming to this hepatic viral infections we have the first class is the interferon drugs and another one we can have the lamivudin okay lamivudin this is a another drug lamivudin okay and there also we can have uh, come example with the hepatitis is the adifovir 
Okay, this is also the another example we can give under the hepatic viral infections. Another, if you want, a still we can write in picavir. Okay, so these are the some of the example drugs. Okay, so whereas interference has a different one, whereas these drugs are going to have a different mechanisms because these are the some of the nucleotide and cytosine analogs. Okay, nucleotide or even some cytokine analogs. Okay, cytosine analogs. Cytosine analogs. Okay. So that means what happens is they have the same structure of the cytosine or that means the nucleotide structures. So they, what happens, whenever we are going to take these drugs, they undergo the phosphorylation. They undergo phosphorylation. Okay. So phosphorylation is going to take place. So what happens is once they undergo the phosphorylation, so they just get converted into the diphosphates di or even triphosphates okay so these will be in case like some examples like if they are in the mono phosphate type 1 the nucleotide so what happens is within the virals within the host cell within the viral one they undergo the phosphorylation they get converted into the di and triphosphates okay so then they get incorporated they get incorporated they get incorporated into the virus one Okay, they get incorporated within this virus one. So, in, after entering into the uh, virus one, after when they get incorporated in there, okay, they break the chains. They break the chains. They break the chains of DNA. They break the chains of DNA so that there will be no replication is going to be get stopped. Okay. So replication is going to be get stopped or even we can call it as a prevention. Prevention of replication is going to be get stopped. So this is the mechanism of action of these drugs. Okay. So where we get these drugs in case of the hepatic viral infection. And the first in, uh, class we got is the respiratory one. We got the treating in the influenza A and B type one. Okay. E, a, B and C type. So there we get the two different classes. One is the neuramidase inhibitors that is oseltamivir and zanamivir. Okay, and the next class is the amantidine and rimantidine. This is also one class of drugs used in treating the respiratory influenza one. Okay, influenza type one. Okay, uncoating process. And the next class is the hepatic virus infection in treating the hepatitis A, B and C. Hepatitis. Okay, hepatitis A, B and C. The first drug is the interferons which are used in treating the alpha, beta, gamma okay and lame uh, woodin and adifovir and takavir so these are the some examples okay example drugs so this is going to be inhibiting the mrna to the trna these are going to be having the monophosphate or the new nucleotide analogs they undergo the phosphorylation so where they get converted to di and triphosphates which are going to be then incorporated into the virus so then they undergo the stop the breaking of the chains okay so Third one is the herpes virus. Okay, herpes simplex virus. Even we can call it as a. Okay, that is a hepatitis. This is a herpes virus. So this herpes virus, so normally causes some cold throats. Okay, so cold uh, even source we can call it as some genital infections. Genital infections. Okay, so these are the some common things which are going to cause by the simplex virus. So this happens, okay, this one is going to be by acyclovir, acyclovir drug. This is a drug which is used. So this one will be coming under the anti-metabolite classification, acyclovir drug, okay. So the same mechanism, okay, this one will also have the same mechanism as that of this one, the undergo the phosphorylation phosphorylation so also the phosphorylation with deoxy guanosin phosphate with deoxy guanosin okay which is a present within the viral okay which is going to present within the virus one so they cause the formation or the termination of the dna polymerase DNA 
polymerase. Okay, so which is going to stop or inhibit? Okay, which is going to stop or inhibit or the, even the termination? Termination of termination of DNA chain. Termination of DNA chain. So all this is going to happen here in the nucleic acid synthesis, which is going to coming under the anti-metabolites classification. That is a herpes simplex virus. So the drug name is acyclovir. The common things which are going to be caused by the herpes simplex virus is some cold sores and genital infections. So what happens when we have these kind of things, we can use the acyclovir as a drug. The mechanism of action is going to take place here in the nucleic acid synthesis, which comes under the anti-metabolites classification and which causes the phosphorylation of the drug, which is going to stop this deoxyguanosin 1, which is the enzymes which are going to present in the virus. So what happens when they are going to inhibit these kind of things, they stop the termination of the DNA chain within the virus one, so that they can, cannot undergo the later on process, okay. So this third one. And the last and final one is the fourth one, okay, that is our RTIs, reverse transcriptase enzyme inhibitors. This is the one where we have been left over, okay. Reverse transcriptase enzyme inhibitors, okay, here we got some of the drugs okay so reverse class that is zero pudding zero is the best example and which can be used in treating the hiv aids from 1987 onwards that is the first class of drugs okay starbudin starbudin so that is another one lamivudin so these are the some examples. We have very big list, but still I am giving only the important ones. That is a zetovudin and stavudin and lamy. So if you want, we can take another one is the abacavir. So these are the some examples which are used in treating the reverse transcriptase enzyme inhibitors. That means we are going to inhibit this particular reverse transcriptase enzyme. So what happens here? In the reverse transcriptase enzyme, we said the, en uh, the viral genetic information will be a single stranded RNA okay okay this enzyme will be get converted to the DNA synthesis one because of a reverse transcriptase process in the name itself we got the reverse transcriptase but generally what happens is in the RNA will be converted to the messenger RNA whereas it is going backwards to the DNA process so what happens these drugs okay so these drugs are having the nucleoside analogs the same thing if you look into the, all the classification, we got all the same things, nucleotide analogs, nucleotide analogs. Okay. So nucleotide analogs, these are going to lack the third position hydroxyl groups, okay. They are going to have the deficiency of the three hydroxyl groups for these drugs. So what happens when we take these drugs? So this is going to stop the chain from the RNA to DNA because the DNA to RNA, so the RNA to DNA, they require the three and five diester bonds linkage, okay. So what happens is because of the uh, taking of these drugs and which cause the lack, the lack of the three hydroxyl group, okay, there will be no three hydroxyl attachment to form the diester bond. So what happens, there will be no formation of this bond, this bond is not going to be formed. So there will be no formation of this diester bond so that there will be no elongation there will be no elongation of dna chain okay because of the breakage system we are going to cause why because there is a we need to for the extension of the chain we require the formation of diester bond with the three and five hydroxyl group and what are the drugs we are going to give zidovidin or stavidin lamidin or whatever the drugs may be they are the nucleoside analogs they lack the three hydroxyl group what happens when we take these drugs, they get just get enter inside all the metabolism and everything. So once when they reach to the viral cell, they just exchange with this one. Okay, instead of this three hydroxyl one, they get exchanged with these analogs. So what happens, there will be no formation of these diester bonds and the elongation of the DNA will be stopped. That is the mechanism of action of all these drugs. Okay. So these are the some of the examples and last but not the least as we said there is a last bus for, uh, for sorry and we got the another leftover that is a packing uh, assembly one which is by the protease inhibitors okay so what are these drugs okay what are the drugs which are coming under the protease inhibitors so normally in the viral one okay 
they have one insight called as aspartyl protease aspartyl protease enzyme okay that is a particular enzyme which is going to present within the viral lung okay even we call it as a retropepsin retro pepsin so that is a one enzyme so these enzymes is a polyprotein one okay polyprotein enzyme which is involved in the cleavage of the proteins of a viral one to get uh, to get uh, converted into the essential enzymes essential enzymes so the essential enzymes can be like example the best one is a reverse transcriptase enzyme okay that is uh, the the previous one which we discovered uh, which we have discussed is also coming from this particular type of the enzymes okay another one is a protease okay these are the enzymes so what happens these enzymes we are going to come from the retropepsin or else aspartyl protease enzyme which is a polyprotein one which is going to break down the proteins polyprotein one in the viral into the essential enzymes namely uh, reverse transcriptase and protease so this one is going to be involved in the nucleic acid synthesis and protease is going to be involved here in the packing and assembly so for this protease one retinovir so this is the best one we can give as an example okay another one is lopinavir okay so these are the examples for protease inhibitor so we got a very very big list of the antiviral drugs but we have discussed only very few of the names okay so keep that in mind and go with this one and so that we have been finished everything about the antiviral drugs so including the antiviral uh, mechanisms this replication process and all this stuff okay